Hello, and welcome to this episode of Allegory Gallery Interviews. Today we're here at Beadfest Philadelphia speaking with Diane Hockey. We hope you'll excuse any background noise as the convention center is buzzing with activity this morning. Diane can be found on www.dianehockey, that's D-I-A-N-E-H-A-W-K-E-Y.com, where you can find information about her and also purchase her work. But you'll also be able to purchase Diane's items on our website under the Allegory Gallery interview section of our online store. So welcome, Diane. Thank you. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for those who may not know you yet. Okay, so I am a ceramic bead maker and mixed media artist. Uh, I've been doing this for at least 15 years, so I'm an old gal here. (laughs) I'm one of the oldies. And uh, so I've been doing bead shows on a regular basis for like the last 15 years. Great, great. So what made you get started in artwork and in what you do, in beads especially? Um... Well, I was always, as a kid, I was always making stuff, um, putting things together. Uh, My favorite thing is I would get my mom's old jewelry, her broken necklaces and all that, and she would give me a pile, and I would disassemble it and reassemble it, uh, because I've I've always loved making jewelry and um, anything sparkly, so I've always had this love of beads and I was doing larger ceramic sculpture, mainly until my daughter was born, and I needed to work on something that was small and portable. And uh, so that's how I got into the bead thing. Um, My friend Melanie Brooks from Earthenwood Studio actually told me there were uh, great bead shows that I could actually (laughs) sell my beads and make money. So I thought that was a great idea. Exactly. Great. Great. Well, we always like to ask our artists who are their favorite artists. So, living or dead, who are a few of your favorite artists? Um, so, let's see. Paul Clay um, and uh, Hunter Wasser and Chagall, um, Beatrice Wood. She was a great, great ceramicist with just such a whimsical style. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, you know, there's a lot of them. I, I, you know, the list is endless, so. but those are, those are like the top. Great. And where are you currently finding inspiration? Um, you know, I get, I get inspiration just from so many different things. Always, always nature. Um, mm-hmm. that's always been a big part of what I do. Um, even though sometimes I take a very sort of whimsical, uh, magical, uh, take on it, not necessarily a realistic take, but there's always, always um, inspiration there. Great, great. And other than beads, what do you like to do? Um, well, I do my larger ceramic sculpture, mm-hmm. um, and you know, being in my studio is my little happy place. Uh, <laughs> so I that's have, where we mostly find you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I knit, and I have two Boston Terriers. Um, so I'm, I'm big into into dogs and dog rescue and uh well tell us a little bit about your work there with them um i do a lot of fundraising for midwest boston terrier rescue and um my dog arlo has an advice column in their newsletter (laughs) great um and i also um do a lot of work for some other uh rescues raising money for medical bills um mostly that happens online on facebook great Great. I know that we've been part of your your fundraising, and, and we're happy to do that when we can. So how about any words of advice for listeners? If they're looking to get into art or bead making, what would you say to them? Um, I would say just do whatever it is that you do best. And don't worry about what the trends are and what other people are doing, because there's only one of you, and... Um, If you do what you love to do and, you know, what makes you happy, then other people are going to gravitate towards that. Great. Great. Well, we thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And I just wanted to say again that you will be able to purchase Diane's beads off of our website at www.allegorygallery.com under the Allegory Gallery interview section. And you can also purchase them directly from Diane at www.dianehockey.com.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is William here again from Allegory Gallery. We hope that you enjoyed that segment speaking with Diane, and we hope that you'll definitely take a look at her offerings on our online store, as well as on her website. As a special bonus to this episode, we're now going to speak with Andrew Thornton, creative director here at Allegory Gallery. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, William. Thanks for having me. Uh, I really enjoyed hearing more about Diane and her process. We're so glad you liked hearing about it, Andrew. Um, so we're going to dive right in here and ask you a few questions about Diane, if that's okay. Sure. So what I always find interesting is hearing how artists meet one another. So what's your story about how you first met Diane? Well, as Diane had mentioned in her interview, she's been around the bead world for a while, and so have I. Um, but we really didn't get to know each other as that well until uh, Melanie Brooks of Earthenwood Studio invited me over um, to her house um, for a show in Detroit. Uh, she had a little bit of a get-together, and that's where I met Diane and really got a chance to talk to her and hear some of her stories. Um, and we've been really friendly ever since. And that's great to hear. After I've gotten into the bead world here a little bit, I realized that sometimes these after-party meetings are the best way to really get to know someone and, and learn about their work and what they do. Oh, definitely. I feel like it's a great opportunity for the artists to really um, step outside of their sales pitch and kind of, uh, you know, get to know each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That's great. And that's what we're trying to do here with Allegory Gallery interviews as well. Well, I think that's a really great way of, um, of kind of showing uh, the process, and not just the process, but getting to know the artist. So often we get to see the finished product, but we don't see um, where those things come from and how they're made. It's very true. So speaking of thing, how things are made, many may not know, um, they know you from the bead world and, and from making beads and some sculptures, but your educational background is actually in painting and mixed media. So from that viewpoint, what, what do you find most interesting about Diane's work? Um, well, I do have a background in painting and mixed media. I went to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Um, and the funny thing about that is there used to be a Barnes & Noble on the corner. Um, and there was this tiny little book, and it was by Hunter Wasser. Um, if you're not familiar with Hunter Wasser, uh, he was an Austrian artist um, who died, I think, in 2000. Um, and he was an activist and, and interested in environmental studies. Um, but anyway, so there was a great little monograph of his work. Um, and I used to walk by it and covet it. And um, I used to save my little pennies from my uh, wait staff jobs and bar backing and doing all different things. Um, and so one day I got it. So you have a pretty close connection with where she's coming from then. Oh, definitely. And probably that's one of the reasons why I appreciate her work. Um, she mentioned in the interview um, her relationship with nature, and I can definitely see that. And it's filtered through this kind of lens of whimsy and artistry. Um, and I want to say that um, she's a, a true artist, Um Oftentimes when you look at the jewelry and bead making world, you'll see two different categories of um, creators. You see designers and you see artists. And Diane is definitely an artist. Um, she sees things and filters it through her own perspective. Um, and what comes of that is this little wonderful world of whimsy and wonder um, with touches of sass and spark, because <laughs> that's Diane. Um, and what I love about her work and really find most interesting is that there aren't any uh, straight lines. Um, she filters everything through her perspective and works through her hand. Um, and that gives it a real unique kind of sensibility where it's not so manufactured. It's definitely of a perspective. It's of um, the way that she sees things and creates things. And you can feel her voice in all of her work. 
Well, that's a great take on things, since especially for me, as I don't come from really an art background, it, those are some of the things that I like to know and like to hear. Well, definitely. I think it's um, one of those things where I don't necessarily think that you have to be an artist to appreciate these things. Um, the fact that I know a little bit about Hunter Wasser and Paul Clay and um, Klimt and some of the more decorative artists um, from that area, uh, it, uh, it informs those ideas. But when you look at Diane's work, you don't necessarily need to know about those things because... I certainly don't, and I love her work, so... <laughs> oh, definitely. Well, like when you see some of her critters where they've got little angry faces or um, you see some of her more uh, subversive pieces, there's always that, that sense of the artist behind the work. And you don't need to know about, you know, German decorative art. No, but it's definitely a diving point if you're interested in that, to be able to get into those areas and, and really research and think about those things. Oh, sure. So with her work, of course, as we always do and we've talked about, we brought back a number of great pieces from Diane's collection and her most current collection. Out of those pieces, just to end the interview here a little bit, what do you like the most? Um, so I'm going to bring this back to when I was in kindergarten. Um, before class would start, we would sit in lines um, and get ready for our teachers to um, open up the classroom. And on the wall, there was a print by Marc Chagall, and it was the juggler. Um, and if you're not familiar with the juggler, imagine um, it kind of anthropomorphized or um, creature that's part human and part hummingbird um, and in a very stylized way with bright primary colors um, and some of the pieces that we've brought back are definitely reminiscent of Marc Chagall with the shape of the eyes and the sensitivity to the lines of the nose and the faces um, we also brought back some really charming little houses um, and I feel like they have such a sweetness to them. Um, and they convey more than just, you know, little houses, but they're almost like intentions. Like she wants to make these little houses that are happy for other people to have little happy houses. And I also like the little angry critters. There's, there's one in particular with stripes, um, that looks like it should be doing a dance or doing a jig or <laughs> stealing your shoes or doing something naughty. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, thank you for joining us, Andrew. And we look forward to interviewing some more in the future. Well, everyone, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Allegory Gallery Interviews. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you will take a look at Diane's work on our online store and also on her website at www.dianehockey.com. Thank you for joining us.